Hello everyone, it's Richard here. Today I want to talk to you about using plastic pellets for 3D printing. This is instead of using the normal filament that we buy on reels today. Okay, so first important thing about plastic pellets is they're normally what, what's used to produce all of the plastic parts that we use today. So these things, these plastic pellets are dried, they're bought in bulk, they're dried, and they're using plastic extrusion uh, molding machines, injection molding machines, to produce most of the plastic parts and bottles and other things that we produce uh, in manufacturing today. So they even produce, obviously, the plastic filaments that we buy on reels for use in home 3D printing. So for quite some time now, I've been wanting to use, directly use plastic pellets uh, for 3D printing rather than having to use filaments. Uh, there's a lot of challenges to that, um, and there are some benefits. The benefits being the cost and the control over the amount of uh, materials you can have to hand uh, and mixing of different colours and materials is, becomes quite a bit easier with pellets than it does with uh, plastic uh, extruded uh, filaments. But first of all I started off uh, looking at what was feasible with pellets and I actually looked at different types of granules. Uh, then m the most of the, the ones I started looking at were sugar types of granules, sugar based materials. And um, my, my early experiments into a granular extruder, as, we, as I'll call it, uh, was with various types of sugar. The one I found that was really, really good uh, to use with, with 3D printing was a thing called isomalt. And isomalt is, uh, is a type of sugar uh, that's generated from, uh, I think, beetroot. Um, and it's a, it's a really uh, interesting, interesting material. It comes in a very granular, um, a very granular form quite quite reasonably large uh, granules for sugar so they're sort of uh, one and a half to two millimeters across um, and it melts at uh, about 130 to 180 degrees so you can treat it a little bit like you do PLA um, and it's actually really nice um, to be to be extruded so this was the very first uh, material I used to experiment with, with uh, granulated extrusion I did a lot of different designs and uh, experimented with all sorts of different uh, different systems, some using Bowden tubes, some using uh, a direct type of screw, and again tubes and, and systems and Bowden tubes. And I ended up, uh, after a few revisions, uh, with a, quite a compact extruder like this. And this is designed to fit on my quick fit mount uh, for 3D printing and take a, it's a fairly small hopper size that can take uh, pellets of one type or another and be driven with a geared motor at the back and an auger that pushes the filament into actually a standard uh, J-head um, hot end. And anyone that knows or follows any of the projects I've been doing knows that I go to quite a lot of trouble to make um, parts for 3D printers with as many standard parts as I can. This is because I want as many people as possible to be able to experiment and try out these things. So I could have made custom augers and custom heating elements, custom extrusion parts, uh, and that would be the easy way to do this type of project. But actually, I was more interested in trying to find a way to use off-the-shelf parts and make it so you can print out parts, as we do with RepRap, because we try to print as much as we possibly can with our own machines. And then the other parts you can buy quite quite simply off the shelf to actually experiment with this method of granular extrusion. So anyone that's got a, a metal hot end would probably end up uh, will probably have an old J head lying around that they may not be using, or they can still be available today. They're, they're a very very good uh, hot end. These um, have one really nice uh, feature for us that they have already a 6.3 fill 3.5 millimeter hole drilled into them that you would normally put a PTFE uh, liner in for the filament, the plastic uh, plastic filament that we use in 3D printing to go down. Uh, what I discovered is if you remove that and actually use that as a thermal insulation and the hot end at the end, a normal auger screw fits uh, rather nicely into uh, the hot end and actually can be used to drive pellets down into, into the heating chamber. So that was the first sort of uh, realization that you could probably use things off the shelf to enable a, a bit of testing experimentation uh, for this type of project. So 
After a few revisions, uh, I settled on this method of driving the, uh, the filament screw down, and it still has to be cooled. You still use a normal fan as you would, would do on a, a normal hot end when you were using PLA, for example. Uh, so you keep this cool, and you, you use the normal normal hot end and the thermistor. Apologise for having uh, just taped my thermistor on. This was a, an experimental uh, model. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Always try and fix your thermistors very well. Um, and it actually produced some really good results with the with the granulated uh, isomalt sugar that I was using and, and, ex and experimenting with. So that gave me some really good uh, good hope that this would be possible for other types of materials. The next, uh, next problem I had was getting hold of different uh, materials to test because unless you buy 25 kilograms or 50 kilograms or even half a ton sometimes of um, uh, uh, plastic pellets, they're actually quite hard to get hold of. And I started this last year, this project, so um, it was actually quite hard. I ended up buying some small amounts of different pellets of different types. This is a, a GPET and uh, different types of, of plastics and uh, uh, an APET type here and they're all about the same size so I determined that this must be pretty much an industry standard uh, size for for virgin new pellets that are used in in uh, extrusion machines and uh, it seemed to be the case because there's quite a lot of available um, a friend of mine actually suggested also uh, earlier this year trying to use uh, recycled plastics, which is something I'm really, really keen on and something I really want to do a lot more of. And uh, he got hold of some, some recycled plastics for me. And they're a little bit chunkier. They, they tend to be quite large pieces of granulated plastic that have just been shredded and cut up into quite large chunks. So although that's a, a great idea, it won't work in this current configuration because of the size of the screw auger and the way it's been set up to work with pretty much industry standard smaller uh, new pellets. So that'll be stage two, trying to work out basically how to how to take uh, recycled pellets and uh, there's all different types you can get. There's, uh, these are high density polyethylenes and uh, polypropylenes that you can get all minced up in, in various uh, uh, configurations. And again, they're very low cost and they can be used for, for much larger scale printing and much larger scale uh, um, extrusion uh, systems. So, along with, uh, uh, with doing the experiments with the sugar, I then moved on to experimenting with the plastics and using different types. I actually ended up just cutting up some PLA uh, filament to make small pellets, pe uh, pellets before I got hold of these ones. Uh, and that led me on to a slightly different design because I needed more torque. Now, the original NEMA 17 motor was fine with the gearing. And I actually end up now using a, a geared planetary gearbox stepper motor, which fits onto the back in the same sort of way and has still a gearing mechanism in here um, as, I, as I have on the previous model, but it provides a lot more torque and a lot more power to be able to push down plastic pellets into the extrusion uh, system. Uh, oh yeah, just as a, a small side point, um, I've actually tried all different types of, of hot end, uh, of uh, J-head uh, hot ends from a version 3, 4 and version 5. I haven't tried a, a clone um, J-head yet, I'm yet to try that one. They've all been official ones from, from uh, Brian uh, at hotends.com, but uh, I will go around and try a few different uh, clone hot ends to see whether I can still get the same same sort of results that I've been getting from the official ones. But virtually any type, version 3, 4 or 5, have given um, reasonably good results uh, with different settings. You have to set the, uh, the auger at exactly the right distance and cool the, the piece just right. So that's a little bit of setting up, but uh, it is possible to get uh, extrusion flow out of these. The other thing I investigated, uh, and this is uh, one thing I'm doing very very soon, is uh, I've uh, coated this, and this will be uh, metalized to allow for extra heat transfer uh, and dissipation. So it almost acts as a heat sink uh, for the uh, hot end as it's cooling, and it and it provides a, a very nice nice finish for the pallets as well to slide down. Okay, so. That was all pretty good, uh, got everything going, had everything ready to test and 
um, the new new motor, lots of power, lots of torque, and it allowed some some really good uh, um, uh, uh, torque that you could be used to, to push these parts down. And then, out of the blue, the Color Fab, the guys from Color Fab, decided that they were going to start stocking pellets, which was really great because I was tr really struggling to get hold of pellets of different sizes and different types. So a while ago I bought some of these pellets and again they came at the industry standard size which I was expecting which is really good news. I was really hoping they'd come all at the same size apart from the PLA pellets which I'm really disappointed in because I bought a lot of these and actually they're now much larger granules than um, I've been using before. So that caused me a little bit of a problem. And I'll have a chat with, uh, with Colorfab and see whether or not they're gonna plan to use, uh, not these little beads, but back to the sort of standard pellets that I've been using before. There are other pellets, um, the, the Colorfab XT, uh, which is the, the PET pellets. They're the same size, or similar size to what I've been used to. And even the, um, the wood fill, is a, is, a, is, a smaller, is a smaller round pellet, so again, pretty hopeful that that will actually be usable as well in this extruder, uh, and, and another really nice material to play with. So really what, um, what this is just a bit of an introduction to the uh, pellet extruder, what I'm going to do is put the files up on Thingiverse for uh, this design and probably the previous design if you want to experiment with other types of materials, and really ask people to get involved in, and make this a community project rather than just something I've been tinkering with, uh, it takes a, a, a little. It's going to take a little bit more design efforts to refine this to something we can use day in day out and have uh, a lot of uses for. But that's where I'm hoping everyone will will contribute uh, and make this project uh, a little bit more. Um, uh, 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 wider uh, than, than currently just, just what I've been doing with it. Uh, one thing I get asked uh, when I tell people about this is how do you deal with the retraction and, and the filament? Normally you would pull back on the extruder with a piece of filament and that would pull the filament back and stop any oozing and, and leaking. And actually you do exactly the same thing with the auger screw. If you reverse the auger screw it takes the pressure off and pulls the filament ever so slightly back up. Uh, you have to move your printer still pretty fast and that's why I've tried to minimise the weight of everything and keep, keep everything as, as compact as possible so it hasn't got a huge hopper. Uh, the idea with this again is that if it's on your machine and maybe in the future we'll have a hopper detect uh, um, uh, signal in there, a little <clears throat> Hall effect sensor or optical sensor that can detect that the pellets are getting low or in the software you could actually determine how much material you used and how much was in the hopper to start with and then you could take your machine to one of the uh, docking points, I'm talking about probably a slightly bigger machine than we're used to, at home 3D printing, and that would actually work as, as it docked, maybe that would trigger a release of more pellets into the, the hopper. And maybe even we can start uh, mixing colours of pellets. And uh, that's why I got various different ones uh, to try and experiment with over the time. And of course why I've got all sorts of different colours uh, from, from Colour Fab as well, to see what else we can do with colour mixing and uh, experimentation with, with material mixing with this type of pellet extruder. So I hope you join me and uh, take, uh, take this challenge um, and take this as a community project um, and see how far we get with, with pellet extruding on RepRap. So um, I'll put the files up on Thingiverse, put some links up, and uh, let me know what you think, let me know how you get on, if you want to have any more information. Uh, I've made this pretty easy to assemble, it just uses M4 bolts and nuts and pretty much standard um, things that, you, that you're used to if you're used to any type of home 3D printing and doing your own types of extruders and things. So uh, ask me some questions or anything else you need to know and uh, let's see what we can do. Thanks a lot, see you next time.